Good day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Right, Wednesday sort of evening here in Australia, mark it up ever so slightly, really just kind of travelling sideways, hovering around that kind of $2.3 trillion mark. Not really going too much above it, not really going too much below it. Uh, yeah, just definitely some sideways accumulation at the moment. Very, very boring, but what we need to remember is when it's boring and no one else is really interested, that's where you're going to make all the money. It's not to say that it can't go lower. Again, no one's going to pick the exact bottom regularly. You can, you know, just kind of fluke it. Just like no one's going to pick the exact top regularly. You can fluke it, you know, maybe once in your life. But outside of that, you just got to be thereabouts. And at the moment, Bitcoin is over $20,000, is over $20,000 discount from where it's been previously. So that's something you need to remember. Now, again, I'm never offering you financial advice. Uh, I'm not a financial advisor in any way, shape, or form, but I like buying things at discounts. So Bitcoin at 46000 sounds pretty good to me. I don't mind buying it. All right, now, Bitcoin dominance is continuing to drop. So this is very interesting. The market has changed. So no matter what anyone says, the market is different. Now, it's always a little bit different from one sort of cycle to the next. It's never going to be exactly the same. But it's definitely different because when we have seen this kind of dominance drop, this is when we've seen altcoins explode previously, or at least once. We've only, a, we've only ever had one kind of real altcoin season. Then we may not ever see anything like that again. And that is what I'm starting to suspect because everyone thinks that it's going to happen. And when everyone thinks that it's going to happen, a lot of the time, not always, but a lot of the time, you can pretty much guarantee right then and there that it's not going to happen. Everyone thought Bitcoin for sure was hitting 100,000 around December last year, maybe January this year, and then we're having this, you know, well, mainly they thought it was happening November, December last year, and then the altcoin season might push out, and so far we just haven't seen anything like that. We did get not too far from it. I mean, 70,000 is not really too far from uh, 100,000, considering we made it from about 4,000 at the last sort of low. So it's still one hell of a move. But the cycles have changed. They are different. Even if we're even in this kind of four-year cycle anymore, I think, you know, maybe now that the big money's here, those kind of four-year cycles, they just, yeah, they won't be the same. But again, who knows? No one really knows. We're all still waiting to see exactly what it is. That's why time in the market always outplays trying to time the market because no one can really time the market at least not to perfection and not all that well but you know you don't have to time it to perfection anyway you just got to be thereabouts and for me look I really just like buying uh, on the dips and uh, selling when things hit you know like a good 10x or a 15x or a 20x something like that I say whew, take some of those profits because that's one of the hardest things to do. Even I do, I've got caught up and think, no, it's going higher, there's so much more to be made, and it then hasn't, and it's dumped a whole lot, and I've had to sell coins for a whole lot less than I could have. And on occasions, I've had to sell coins for a loss, and I particularly don't like doing that, but sometimes you've got to cut your losses, and other times, yeah, you know, you just can't hold any longer, and then, you know, sure enough, as soon as you sell something, it'll have some kind of pump. Not always a big one, and that's the ones that hurts when you sell something and then it just goes on this monster run. If you sell something and it just, you know, maybe doubles, then you're just sort of like, oh, whatever. It took so long and did nothing. I couldn't hold out for it. As long as you had other ones that have done all right, then it makes up for it. All right, there is a little bit of volume there, all right? So people are buying the dips. But again, we've just got to see, can it hold? We're going to get to the Bitcoin chart at the moment and that $46,000 mark, I mean, it's just kind of hanging on. We've dipped down below, but that we pump up above and there's definitely buy pressure at $46,000. i am just, I'm not sure if it can hold. I'll be glad if it does, but I'm just not sure. All right, again, Bitcoin price, as I said, 46000 just holding on to it. ETH gas prices, sort of all over the place at the moment. They're up, they're down, really depending on what's happening in the market. All right, considering we're up almost 1% in the last 24 hours, what's done the best in the last 24 hours in the top 100? All right, there we go. ICP, Internet Computer, up 20%. Now, what worries me about this, though, is I think it's just a bit of a sort of pump. This used to be, I think, three dollars $400, and now it's down to 30 something Very worrying. So for me, I just, I'm not buying any ICP whatsoever until... You know, there's just no real news about it. There's no hype around it, no nothing, and that's what has me worried. 
Right, uh, Olympus up a little bit, nearly 14%, so that's nice. Helium doing all right. Mina Protocol, DeFi uh, Kingdom, Jewel, there we go, up 10%. I'm very skeptical on a lot of new DeFi projects. Too many of them come out, and then they have rug pulls or uh, hacks and all sorts, and I'm not saying that's what's going to happen to Jewel DeFi. I like to just focus on one or two DeFi projects that have been around and haven't had too many, if any, issues. All right, Chainlink, okay, doing all right, making a move. That's been, you know, one of the, not so much a disappointment, but it just hasn't moved as much as what people thought it would. I get the feeling like maybe Chainlink is going to be that coin that does the best in the bear markets and when everything else is quiet because it has that real world value and it's a little bit less uh, speculation than some other projects. That's just a theory that I've got. Raven coin. So look, we got some nice double digit moves and look, even some nice single digit moves from coins. What about the flip side of the coin though? What hasn't performed well in the last 24 hours? All right, so amps down a little bit and that's interesting considering we heard that news, but I guess it's, you know, buy the rumor, sell the news. Amps being added to grayscale, so now there's a bit of a sell off. Uh, Myota uh, is down a little bit. Spell token, I've got no idea what that is and I don't know why I'd ever want to buy something called spell token. Yearn Finance down, Rose. So look, we got some coins that are down, but look, they're pretty minor. The worst one that's down is 6.4% and that's AMP. So that really is not much at all. Again, a bit of a sideways kind of market going on at the moment. All right, so let's have a look at the Bitcoin chart. And what's interesting is, again, we had this breakout uh, and it was a fake out. We've come back under and now we're just sitting on this downtrending line at the moment. Are we going to use this as support and finally bounce off or are we simply going to fall back inside it and then probably quit? pretty quickly come down to this $42,000 mark. At the moment, it's hanging on for dear life. I mean, you know, if we really want to zoom in, you know, you can see it right there. Again, we had the breakout. It was a fake out. It couldn't hold. We started using that line as resistance, had a breakout again, and now we just keep bouncing off it. So as I said before, bullish would be all right if we broke out and we came back and bounce off this maybe a couple of times and eventually spring off and so far that's what we're doing so maybe things aren't looking too bad i mean they're not really looking bad anyway look if this market travels sideways for a number of sort of weeks or months i am quite all right with that i can tell you right now because that is just accumulation for me i don't mind buying i really do think the lowest we're going to go unless we're truly in a bear market and i don't think we are i think the lowest we could go is down to around about this thirty two and a half thousand dollar mark that's where that cme gap is and that's if we make it down there i think the chances are we could you know kind of slowly creep down slowly creep down we get into kind of the 40 ish thousand dollar range and then we have one big kind of capitulation to come down cover that cme gap and then we go up that's if we continue to go down maybe we just kind of travel sideways in and around here for a while before we start to make our way up or maybe we just explode up who knows but anyway that's the bitcoin chart it's still you know not a whole lot's going on we haven't really seen one way or the other where things are going but this feels a little bit like this just a little bit smaller because look we see we had that big drop off then we had a bit of a fake out we thought it was going uh, to finally break back up came back down and then we had that final sell off so we've had the, the big drop down we had a bit of a fake out thinking this was it maybe we get one more big final sell off maybe I need a 42 sort of thousand rather than down to you know sort of 33,000 or maybe just down to kind of 36,000 before we then start to again do something like this who knows and maybe you know finally push us up to that kind of eighty thousand dollar mark because now all the talk is everyone's saying you know when do you think in 2022 is bitcoin going to get to a hundred thousand i'm not going to be surprised and i'm not saying that this is what's happening but i'm not going to be surprised if we don't get to a hundred thousand in 22 i wouldn't be surprised if we don't get to something like eighty ninety thousand have a 50 plus percent correction bring us all the way back down to sort of 40 ish thousand uh, dollars and that will be kind of like a bear market and then we start to make our way back up now again i'm never offering you financial advice i don't know what's going to happen i just wouldn't be surprised because again if everyone's expecting it to happen well not everyone because there's never going to be everyone expecting it but if too many people are expecting it to happen 
quite often it doesn't happen because the big players have more of a control and then they're just going to dump it right before it gets to 100,000. Or if they really think it's got a whole lot more in it, they might pump it to 100,000, kind of dump it, and once it gets back down to 70, 80,000 and everyone's panicking, they could have a whole lot of buy orders in and then it pumps it back up. It's really hard to know what's going to happen, but they are definitely things that I'm thinking about and why I have changed my strategy to ensure that now I'm not going to chase the pumps too much at all. I'm really just going to wait for good dips to buy. But I'm going to try and maintain that I have 10% of cash at all times. And that means I will have to take profits regularly. And I don't mind, say you buy something, you put $10,000, let's say you put $10,000 into Matic and it turned into 100000 I wouldn't mind taking $30,000 out of Matic right then and there, but continue to dollar cost average into Matic if the prices were good and it wasn't a, what you call it, a bear market, because then you've got your capital back that you can go looking for other areas. And you can also, if you want, and this isn't the greatest way to do it, but you can still dollar cost average back into Matic because then if it goes down a whole lot, you're buying it on the cheap, but you've still taken your initial 30,000, you know, that 30,000 out, sorry. So it's your initial money in, Plus, you've doubled that again, and you still got a good position. Again, that's not the, it's not exactly the best way to do things, but I wouldn't mind doing that because then at least you've got your money out. And if you believe in the project, again, you're buying it on the dip, and hopefully, if it does it again, then you can do the same kind of thing. You can look for other opportunities. So, for me, I don't mind taking profits out of something, particularly if it's gone up a whole lot. And if I think it's possibly going to go up more, because that's what you've got to remember, it's only possible, then I'll continue to dollar cost average in. And if it turns out I was wrong, it doesn't matter because I've taken all my money out and some again. And look, I've already done that with Matic. Uh, in fact, I have taken not a good chunk. I've still got most of my Matic sitting there, but a good chunk compared to what I put in. I put in only a couple, I think two or $3,000 and I turned it into a substantial amount. I took quite a lot of uh, that sort of out, but the bag that I have left is uh, still, you know, 10 times sort of bigger. Not 10 times bigger, that's not true. Probably four times bigger than what I actually took out. And I'm still happy to dollar cost average back into Matic because now I've got all my money back. The Matic that I do have and that's staking and doing all the rest of it, that's just sort of house money. And the money I'm putting back into it is only small amounts. So if nothing happens with it, it doesn't matter. But if I then, you know, say dollar cost average into Matic again, another $5,000 over time before we get the next big pump and it pumps, well, then I can do the same again. I've got to take $5,000 out plus some profits, hopefully, and I'll always still have that bag of Matic still going unless at some stage I believe that, you know, Matic's no longer going to do what it's doing. And I didn't mean to pick Matic for any specific reason. It's just one of the coins that did the best. But that is something I don't mind doing. Again, a lot of people will think, no, that's not a great way to do it. If you believe it's going to go up, you may as well just, you know, hold or keep dollar cost averaging. Yeah, but I want to have that cash sitting on the side and I want to be able to buy into other projects as well. And I don't want to be buying into other projects, you know, when Maddox dumping, which it might be for some reason. I'd rather just have that, you know, good stable coins sitting there. And again, some earning yield and all the rest of it. Anyway, I've got it off track a little bit, but that's sort of uh, the things that I don't mind doing and I think is not a bad way of doing it. Again, other people might tell you different. Now, one thing more I wanted to show you is about TA. As I've said before, TA is great. I like it, but it works until it doesn't work. This is this line. If you've been watching my videos for a while, you've got to remember, there was a bit of a flag being presented here. And so the, this is what TA is. So what you can do is you take a line from the top, or sorry, from the bottom to the top, and then you can see this wedge forming. And then what you can do is grab this. You grab the line. And you put it on where you think it's going to break out thereabouts and this gives you and again it's just a rough indication of where it might go so it was looking like uh, Bitcoin could go to about 88,000 well that didn't play out too well did it didn't even make it to 80 70,000 sorry and look at this big kind of fall off we've had so now I'm going to get rid of this we don't need this anymore we know this is invalidated but this is just why I want to show you that there's more to making money than simple TA. TA is good though, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying it's no good, but it's, it, you know, 
from the TA that I've sort of seen, uh, you know, used by people, you know, maybe 50% of the time it's right, maybe a little bit more, 60% of the time it's right. But, you know, plenty of the times it is wrong. And that's, again, that's more a trader kind of thing. And particularly if you're using leverage and that, which I don't use and I don't endorse, you make your own mind up about that. But if you are, you know, using leverage and things like that, make sure you've got stop losses and, you know, you're doing it properly because otherwise you're going to get wrecked because there would have been plenty of people probably long in this and going, yep, I'm ready and look where we've gone and it's still going down at the moment again we get these little rallies up and that's nice but i'm still waiting to see if over the next few days particularly by the end of the week if we don't end up sort of coming down to forty-two thousand, and then maybe do we do the same like i said that i just have that sneaky suspicion that maybe that cme gap is going to be the bottom you know hopefully it doesn't go down that low uh for sort of everyone's sake unless they've just got a whole stack of cash sitting on the side but if it does, like I said, I'm going to buy incrementally on the way down. Uh, I don't have any problems with that. Even if 32,000 is not the bottom and we're going down to, I don't know, 15,000 or 10,000, whatever it is, I will continue to dollar cost average into Bitcoin because I like buying it at a discount. I don't like buying it so much when it's at all time highs. But again, that's not to say I wouldn't buy it at all time highs. I would just be putting a whole lot less into it. Uh, the lower it goes, I guess you could say, sort of the more I would be uh, keen to put into it. But that's me, never financial advice, you do you. All right, a couple of stories I want to look at. SEC again delays a decision on a Bitcoin ETF. And so this one is now uh, NY Digs Bitcoin ETF. They've put it out 60 days until March 16th. So we know that Grayscale, and I think it's Bitwise, they have one that is, excuse me, to be decided on, it's either late January or early February. I mean, March is only another sort of month away. Again, I take this back to here around sort of, you know, February, uh, March, maybe, you know, we've finally sort of at that capitulation stage where everyone's sort of given up and then all of a sudden we get a spot Bitcoin ETF and that could really push, uh, push things quite high if that would happen. And I'm not saying it's going to happen, but it'd just be, it just... It looks like it's definitely a possibility again. That's what I'm thinking. I don't want to go over it again because I've already gone over it enough times. All right, Solana. They've, there's talk that they went down today, but from what I've been able to read, it doesn't look like they went down. They've just slowed right down. So Solana hit with another network incident causing degraded performance. So some people were saying it was a, a halt, a shutdown, all the rest of it. But uh, Anatoly Yakonenko, I butchering that name i need to apologize to him he's come out and said that uh it wasn't a ddos attack this time it was just simply uh the network was working slow so users were debating whether it was a uh, cause of another ddos attack and he's come out and said no it was not a ddos attack uh but that does go to show what can happen like solana was all the hype you know and i'm not knocking solana by any way shape or means but it just was all the hype and again it was the new you know it was the ethereum killer everything's the ethereum killer early on it'll be interesting because you know neo was going to be an ethereum killer and oh god what else was it eos was going to be an ethereum killer. these were the biggest things ever and they were going to change the world and be better than ethereum and now you know that i won't say they're dead projects but they are nowhere near where they used to be and that is the chance that we take with solana it all sounds really good now but it's already had a couple of issues. But in all fairness, all smart contracts or all cryptocurrency things like this, they have their issues. It's teething problems, you know, like children growing, you know, they'll have all kinds of issues. So I'm not trying to shade Solana at all. I've invested in Solana and I continue to invest in Solana because I like the project, but it just goes to show they're not quite there and they're not ready for, you know, to take over the world and be the Ethereum killer. They're just not. They've got a long way to go before they're going to get to that. So just be careful when you kind of see things, you know, and all these projects coming out saying they're Ethereum killers and they're the next best thing. They don't have the time up their sleeve and the kind of usage that Ethereum does to really say that, you know, they're any chance of taking over Ethereum. But again, I'm not saying I don't like Solana. I do, I've invested and I continue to invest. Again, back to DeFi, I told you not to sleep on it. So TVL jumps 12% since mid-December and it's close to $25 billion. And again, at the moment, 
you know, these could be the new bear markets. Again, I just don't want to spend too much time here, but this could be a bear market. This could be a bear market. This could be the new bear markets in crypto. And I am starting to wonder if that's, you know, again, when you're going to see the DeFi project start to do better. You know, when everything's quiet and there's no real gains to be made in buying projects because it's all, again, just too quiet and they're kind of overbought uh, and, you know, need to go back and find their kind of fair price. Is that when we're going to see, again, DeFi pump until people are ready, you know, to buy into projects because now they're at good prices and they start to make their way back up. That is a thesis of mine and I'm waiting to see if it plays out. But again, don't sleep on DeFi. My my thesis is I'm, I'm always going to have some DeFi going at all times. Even if it's, uh, you know, if it's really, really hot, then again, I don't want to chase things anymore. I've done that and it's not worked out as good as I would like to. What I want to do is I want to focus on things when they're really down. Hence why I've been focusing on DeFi for the last sort of little bit. Again, not throwing too much in in case the market is really about to take a turn for the worst. But it is one of the things that's been down the most. So that's what I've been putting a little bit of money into. I'm waiting for, you know, the metaverse and uh, NFT sort of stuff to cool off. And I'll start to put a little bit more into that. And if DeFi starts to pump, well, then I just leave DeFi alone and let it do its thing. Um, I chased too hard in the last sort of 18 months certain things and it just didn't pay off as well as if I had to just held my cash on the sides and bought the dips of the things that were really quiet. That is where the money is made. It doesn't mean they're going to pump just because they're quiet. It just means eventually they will. And whatever that happens, if you were, you know, buying it up while not much was happening, when it does start to go up, you do extremely well. As opposed to things that are already starting to pump and they've already gone up maybe sort of 40, 50%, you know, and then you're starting to buy and then you've already missed out on a lot of the exponential gains. Uh, and yeah, just hasn't worked out all that well for me. All right, large banks are beginning to launch crypto trading services in response to digital asset boom. So this is just what you need to remember is yes, it's quiet at the moment and it's boring. And yeah, it absolutely could go lower, but this space is growing. It doesn't just kind of take off. It's not rocket ships to the moon. That's not how it works. It's rocket ships to the moon when you look at over a five or a 10 year period or something like that. Again, you can just go back and look at Bitcoin over its entire period over the last 12 years. It literally looks like a rocket ship to the moon really with some, you know, kind of dips in it and some pretty good dips. But overall, it looks like a rocket ship to the moon. Well, it's going to be no different with the rest of this space at the moment. It's going to be super volatile. But in 10 years, 15, 20 years time, the good projects, you're going to look back and it literally will have looked like a rocket ship to the moon. It's just that day-to-day -day stuff and even sometimes sort of week-to-week, month-to-month stuff, you know, you can get particularly more the day-to-day -day and the hours. That stuff will just crush you. But let's have a look at the banks that are in. So Commonwealth Bank here in Australia, it's the biggest bank in Australia. They're currently running a pilot program with cryptocurrencies and the last I read is they're going to roll it out to the rest of Australia sometime around kind of February or March, I think is what they said. Now we've got a group of savings banks in Germany that are also getting involved. We've got a Swiss subsidiary of BBVA Bank uh, that is getting involved. The Bank of New York Mellon and Fidelity, uh, well, Bank of New York, uh, New, New York Mellon have teamed up with Fidelity. So again, the banks are getting into it. They have, they have kind of the diamond hands. They really, they don't mind. And that's a, here's a perfect example. The best of them, banks and VC funds and hedge funds and that, they don't get it right. They don't buy at the exact bottom. They don't sell at the exact top. But they have learnt to simply buy and hold. But they also will shed losers. If something's just not doing enough, well enough, they're not going to have thrown everything into one project for a start. So if it doesn't work out, then they're happy to just shed it. You know, maybe they lose, you know, $40 million, but they've got another project that they put, you know, $10 million in that's now turned into a hundred million or a couple of hundred million, you know, whatever it is, and they've made that money up. That's the way it works. That is smart investing right there. And ladies and gentlemen, number one, do your research. Number two, be prepared for the volatility, particularly here. You gotta you gotta spend some time. A lot of people and I was you know, I was one of those people as well, and pretty much everyone does the same. They come to crypto and they literally think they're gonna put a couple of thousand dollars in and they're gonna put, you know, 
they're going to turn it into a couple of million and they're going to do it, you know, in a matter of weeks or maybe even a matter of just a couple of months. Some very, very lucky, lucky people will do that. And when I say some, it's very few. Hardly anyone that happens to, but there might be a few. The majority of people, it'll probably take four, five years to turn a very small amount into a really large amount or a reasonable or large amount into unbelievable, you know, ungodly amounts. But you've got to be here for the long run. Again, I'm going to say it. Time in the market way out does time, trying to time the market. That is really, really hard to do. All right, 2022 will usher in regulatory clarity, institutional adoption, says uh, FTX's uh, Sam Bankman Fried. I think he's right. I think we're going to get a lot more institutional adoption. That is going to push the space further. But it's not until all that kind of really, you know, unfortunately, the people who are really late to the party, and they still might be a couple of years away. They might not be here till 2025 uh, and onwards. That's not to say the price can't go up from now till then. But we might not see the, you know, again, people talking about a million dollar Bitcoin and, you know, $10 million Bitcoin and, you know, all that kind of stuff and Ethereum worth 100000 whatever the prices are, I've got no idea. But we might not see those super big prices for another seven years, eight years. It literally might take till 2030. But let's say you're buying Bitcoin right now at $46,000 and it does take another eight years to go to a million dollars. That's still one hell of a return. And then again, you know, whatever other altcoins that are out there that, you know, prove the test of time. Again, like Matic, perfect example. You know, you can pick it up for sort of $2 now. If Bitcoin goes to 100000 and Matic becomes like the number one layer two, imagine what the price is going to be worth considering you can buy it now for $2. Now, don't get me wrong, it's not going to be worth 100 Well, I won't say it's not. It's probably unlikely going to be worth 100000 but hey, if you turn two dollars into maybe three, four, ten, fifteen thousand dollars, and I mean per coin, not just you put in two dollars and turned it into that, although that would be nice. But imagine you bought, you know, a couple of hundred dollars worth of Matic for two dollars, and then in ten years' time, each one is worth, you know, a couple of thousand dollars. That is life changing wealth right there, no matter who you are, no matter where you are. Now, again, please don't rush out and buy Matic just because I said uh, that name and that price. I like Matic. Uh, I'm buying Matic. But I'm just saying, don't think that, you know, that's me saying that that's what is going to happen. But there are going to be coins that are going to do that. We're already seeing that. Ethereum was worth pennies once upon a time. Bitcoin was worth pennies once upon a time. Uh, Solana was worth, you know, 60 cents a dollar once upon a time. It's worth... You know, it was worth 200 and something dollars now, and that's in its first kind of year in this space. Imagine where it might be in 10 years' time if it really lives up to the hype and does all the things that it's supposed to. So there is huge, you know, unbelievable wealth to be made here, but it will be made from the people who are smart and can buy and generally hold. It's not so much going to be the traders and the people trying to tie in the market jumping in and out. That is super hard to do. Not impossible, really really good people and some just really lucky people will be able to do it but the people who make the real wealth they're going to people that they they are going to be the people that generally buy and hold and just buy the dips of good projects something to keep in mind last but not least so it's not all you know rainbows like we said the sec has come out and delayed a bitcoin etf which is not good and the uk uh, watchdog has banned some crypto ads saying that they are failing to highlight the risks now I kind of agree with that. I still like the idea of crypto ads, but how many other investment ads do you see out there? Not many. I, I don't watch TV and see a whole lot of uh, ads that are kind of really spruiking investments. You're only going to get that stuff when you generally go to banks and financial advisors and things like that. And I think the same needs, the same needs to be made of crypto because it is super volatile and risky. For people that don't understand it, they just won't be able to take it. They're going to get crushed and wrecked. And, you know, like most of us, when we first start, when you see something, you know, dump by 50%, it's just, it's shattering. Until you've been in the space for a while. Now I can watch things go down by 50% and I don't even bat an eye. 70, 80%, trust me, uh, I've got some tears coming out of my eyes when I see things like that. 
But again, if it's a good project and it's down that much, that is just a massive buying opportunity for me. So I don't mind seeing that. It just hurts and the tears come out of my eyes if I basically bought near the all-time highs and then all of a sudden it's dumped by that much. That really hurts. But again, I've been around long enough to kind of know and I've been around long enough... Yeah, again, I've been around long enough, sorry, to know that, you know, it doesn't mean it's over, but I've also been around long enough to know that sometimes, unfortunately, some of these projects, they, they're they just dead. They're never going to, you know, get back to their old all-time highs. Like NEO hasn't been able to do it. Bitcoin Cash hasn't been able to do it. And I'm not trying to pick on NEO. I, I still like NEO, but it, it just hasn't lived up to the hype. And, you know, Cardano is, you know... Everyone thought it was going to go so much higher and it hasn't. I like Cardano. I don't by any means think it's dead. But it's just sometimes, you know, if you bought it at near $3 uh, and it's now down around $1.20 or something, like you're hurt and that's really, it's hard to take. But if you believe in the project, you believe in the team, you just got to hold. Here's a little fact that, again, not too many people know, but no one has lost money in crypto if they've been in for four years and been in good projects, i.e. Bitcoin, uh, what else is it, oh god, I'm, Ethereum, how did I not even think of that, Ethereum uh, and Cardano and things like that, they are up, so unfortunately for some of us who've bought in in the last kind of couple of weeks maybe, you might have to wait four years, but if you're in a good project and it's you know going to stand the test of time in four years, you're going to be laughing. But if you sell at a loss and panic sometimes, like I said, you've got to cut your losses. Maybe the project you're in is dead and it's just never going to go back. But if you put into some good ones, chances are you're going to be well up within four years. But again, that's never financial advice and you need to do what's right by you. And if selling at a loss and you know getting out and never coming back to the space is the right thing for you, then fair enough. There, There's other markets out there to you know make money. You don't have to come to crypto, which can... You know be soul crushing at times but yeah that volatility when it's to the upside there's no better thrill all right that's it from me stay safe be kind to one another pretty hard to be on that gain train at the moment but if you are congratulations to you and i'll see you next time